We've organized our code so we have one order object shared between all the screens in our app. This works really well, because it means we can move backwards and forward between those screens without losing any data. However, it has a serious problem too, which is that in our order class, we've used the at published property wrapper to announce changes on those properties. As a result, we've lost automatic codable conformance. If you don't believe me, just try modifying your order class so it is codable. And when you press build, Swift will complain loudly. Swift does not understand how to encode or decode these at published properties. This is a problem in this app because we want to try and submit the user's order to an internet server, which means it's got to be JSON. We need the codable protocol to work. Otherwise, they're sort of writing out strings by hand. The fix here is to add the codable conformance by hand, which means telling Swift what should be encoded to JSON and then how it should be encoded and also how it should be decoded, which means converted back from JSON into Swift structs. Now, the first step here means adding an enum to our class that conforms to coding key. We'll then list all the properties we want to say out to JSON one by one and then we'll use that. Now in our order class here, that's basically everything, right? Type, quantity, uh, special requests we could do, we don't have to, because really what we care about is extra frosty and add sprinkles. Uh, name, address, city, and zip, they're all fine. So basically not types and not special requests enabled because we can get that from the other two. Anyway, let's go ahead and write that out now. There is an enum inside this called coding keys which conforms to coding key. We'll then say case type, quantity, extra frosting, add sprinkles, name, street address, city, and zip, like that. So those are all properties, the exact names from our order class that we want to actually encode and decode. The second step is going to be to add a custom encode to method that will create a container using those coding keys that we just made. And then write out all our properties into particular uh, keys, their respective keys, right? Write type to type, quantity to quantity, and so forth. This is really just a matter of calling encode blah for key again, again, and again. So we'll say inside our order class, make some space at the end here, there's an encode to encoder method here. And first up, we'll get a container by saying var container is encoder.container keyed by our coding keys.self. And now we can write back only types of our coding keys to there, so it's safe to use. We'll say try container.encode our type for the key type, then try container encode quantity for the key dot quantity. Then we'll do try container dot encode uh, extra frosting. Oops, extra frosting for key extra frosting. Try container dot encode add sprinkles for key add sprinkles like that. And then our delivery stuff down here. Try container dot encode name for key uh, name. Try container encode street address for street address, try container encode city for city, and try container encode zip for key zip. In the challenges for this, by the way, we'll look at other ways to do this, but that's enough for now. Now we've marked this whole method as being throwing. It might throw errors. That means we can go ahead and use try repeatedly in here without having to do do and catch. Any errors that are thrown in here will get bubbled up to whichever calls this method to be handled there. So we haven't got to worry about it. Just let them propagate upwards and be handled somewhere else. Our final step is to implement a required initializer to decode an instance of order from some archive data, i.e. JSON or XML or whatever. This is pretty much the reverse of encoding uh, and it even benefits from the same throws functionality. So we can just say uh, init from decoder like that. And then 
pretty much undo what you just did. Get a container first using try decoder.container keyed by coding keys.self. Then read out our type using container.decode. This will be an int for key type. Then we have quantity is container.decode. Another int for the key uh, quantity. Then we have some booleans. So that's our extra frosting is uh, try container decode. It's like a bool.self for key extra frosting. Add sprinkles, try container decode a bool.self for add sprinkles. And that's the address stuff. The name is try container decode string.self, oops, daisy, dot self. Like that, uh, for key name. Then street address is try container decode string dot self for key street address. Uh, then city is try container decode uh, string dot self for key uh, city. And finally zip is try container decode another string for key. I missed a try, sorry. Try and try. Okay. It's worth adding at this point that you can, if you want to, decode your data in any order you want. You haven't got to match the order they were declared or the order they were written. In mean, any order you want is fine. I'm doing it in the sort of straight declaration, declaration order both times, make it easy to remember, but it's fine. And that code makes this class fully codable compliant we're basically bypassing the at published property wrapper, which means reading and writing the values inside directly. However, it does not make our code actually compile, right? There's still errors happening elsewhere. And in fact, even though this code is all fine, the new errors occur elsewhere. Um, the problem now is that we just made a custom initializer for our order class, right? And so Swift wants us to use that everywhere. You know, even in places like right here, we're making a new empty order. The app just started, we got no information at all. We have to now use our new from decoder initializer. Fortunately, Swift allows us to add multiple initializers to a class, which means we can create in any number of different ways. Empty with initializers, with uh, with, our, with various properties to begin with, with uh, JSON decoder, who knows what, it's down to us. In this situation, it means we can create a new initializer back in our order type that will create a new order with no information whatsoever. It's just basically empty as it is. Um, we can do that just fine. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and add a new initializer above the previous one. So let's say, let's put it here perhaps. Uh, I'll do it for encode as well, really. There we go. It'll be in it and then open close. That's it. <laughs> Takes no params, does nothing at all. That's our new initializer. And now our code should be back to compiling again. Boom, there we go. And our codable conformance is complete. This means we're ready for the final step, which means sending and receiving one of these order objects over the internet.